Hello folks, welcome back to the electronics lab and welcome back to a Toyota Prius Gen 3 version 1C open source inverter converter board block 2 revision. I am making this video to the two day because my grip on sanity is beginning to erode. We've got people on the open inverter forum now that seem to be having massive problems with programming the two microcontrollers on this and indeed other uh, versions of this PCB. This video is going to serve as a programming guide for programming not only the STM32F103 part that is common across all of the open inver inverter uh, systems but also programming the the smaller Atmel at Mega 328P microcontroller that is used on the Prius Gen 3 and the Aorus Gen 3 inverter boards for the purpose of running the Buck Boost converter. So we're going to show you how to program the inverter microcontroller and the Buck Boost converter microcontroller. Before getting into this, however, it is worth mentioning two things. Firstly, if you purchase a complete kit of this or indeed any other board from the EVBMW web shop, this microcontroller comes pre-programmed with the latest inverter firmware. And this microcontroller will come pre-loaded with the Arduino boot loader. And you will not need to do any other specific programming tasks for either microcontroller. The Atmega 328 may then be programmed as an Arduino Uno via the six pin standard FTDI header that is on the PCB here. If you purchase a partially built board, so just a PCB as I receive it from JLC PCB, and neither microcontroller will have any programming on them. The first thing that we need to do is we need to apply 12 volt power to our board. We do this by means of the 34 way main header connector here, which I have soldered to the board for the purposes of this demonstration. 12 volts positive power with this brown wire here will be applied to the top left pin as I'm looking at it here, like so. And a ground connection with this blue wire, we will count one, two, three, four, five, and six pins down and connect that like so, all on the outside row of pins on the 34 way main header. Once this has been done, we will see that one red LED here illuminates, telling us that our uh, power supply section of our board is running properly. Firstly, we are going to deal with programming the STM32 microcontroller here that handles the inver inverter tasks. In order to do that from a 
standing start, uh, as it were, there are several methods. By far the cheapest, easiest and most accessible way for the end user is by means of one of these STM or ST-Link V2 USB dongles. There are several uh, colors and variants of these available on, on eBay for only a few one or two so that you have spares. You will observe that on this there is a pinout and that pinout represents the pins that are on the back of the device here. A little bit hard to see, there we go. I have connected three of these DuPont uh, link wires on here and I have connected them to SW clock, SWDIO and G for ground. That is short for single wire clock, single wire data input and output and of course ground. So in this case the orange wire is clock the yellow is data and the green is ground. On our printed circuit board here, we will see that there is a three-way header that I have soldered a little 2.54 millimeter connector into. There is a silk screen which says CLK on this pin, which is the pin nearest us, and DAT on the pin furthest away. GND, or ground, is the middle pin. So in this case, I'm going to connect my wires. So lines from the programmer. So I have clock ground and data connected to this pin header. I'm now going to connect a USB cable to our programmer. We will now go to the PC and initiate program. The software that we're going to use is called STM32 ST-Link Utility. This is a free download. There will be a link to one of the places that you can find it in the description. It is uh, the program that we use with those little cheap ST-Link USB dongles. First thing we need to do is to click Target and click Connect. What we want to see is that we get a reading like this, which is a basically a dump of the device's memory. And in this case, they're all Fs because it's blank. Up here on the top right, we see that it has identified the device and identified the flash memory size. There will be a second tab here we want to click on. I'm going to just close that because that was a previous um, program. If we look here, it says binary file. So I'm going to click on this. And that's going to bring up a window. Where it's going to look for a binary file. The file that you want to put on here first is called stm32loader.hex, not .vin hex click open that file's contents are now displayed we then click target program and verify the window pops up you can leave all of this as you see it here or change yours to um, represent this and just click start and that's it 
that is the bootloader now program. The second part of the programming requires us to close this file. We now have binary file once again here. We click this, back down, and we can choose in this case stm32 sign dot hex again dot hex not dot vin. We simply rinse and repeat, go to target, program and verify, and click start. Now return to our printed circuit board. We can see that there is a second LED beside the red power LED that is blinking 10 times per second. This means that we have successfully programmed the STM32F103 microcontroller with both its boot loader and its uh, firmware in this case we chose the sign firmware you can choose foc firmware also but always choose the dot hex file you can then via wi-fi change those later on at this point then we can disconnect and re remove the st link programmer and that is that part of the operation concluded. The next phase of this programming operation requires us to program the Arduino boot loader onto the Atmega 328p microcontroller. This is achieved via this six pin in circuit serial programming header. This process has been causing a lot of problems. I'm going to show you the working method that I employ. I would strongly advise people to follow this. The programmer we are going to use for this task is the Atmel ICE. This is what it looks like. On the back we will see Atmel ICE. I'll try and find a link to this and put it in the description of this video for you. I have over the years struggled with all of these little USB discs and Arduino as programmer things. However, this just works. So, first thing that we need to do is to connect one end of the supplied ribbon cable the AVR side, not the SAM side, the AVR side. The other end, I can get rid of that. The other end will have a matching plug uh, for our little six pin header here. We're going to connect this with the tab on this facing towards the edge of the PCB. Connect like so. We then have a green light appear on our programmer. Let's leave that there. The software that we are going to use is Atmel Studio 7. This is again a free download from Atmel. We will go to Tools and Device Programming. We have selected here Atmel ICE as the tool at mega 328p as the device interface isp for in circuit serial program you will then click apply next thing to do is to click the read button beside read device signature that has correctly initiated communication with our microcontroller there are two things that we now need to do the first is to set the fuses. So we're going to click on fuses. So we want to set our low fuses being 0x FF, our high fuses being 0x DE, 
and our extended fuses being 0x05. We'll then select program and read that back. Just check on our read device signature, that's fine. And then we'll go to memories. And the file that we want to program is this file called optiboot underscore at mega 328.x. We want to program this into the flash area. You will find this file in whatever directory that you have installed your Arduino IDE into, in whatever operating system that you may be using. At this point, we click Program, and the device is now programmed. And there is now a working Arduino boot loader on our Atmega 328P, and we can now access that via the Arduino IDE. So folks, that is how I program these boards, programming both microcontrollers on here. Is it the only way? No, but it is the way that works for me and uh, I have found to be the best way to avoid a whole plethora of problems. So, I hope this video has been some use to you. Do check the links in the description for some of the programs and tools that you will need to perform this task. And to repeat, should you buy a full kit from the EVBMW webshop, all of this will have been done for you. So, as always, do not forget to dislike, unshare, unsubscribe. Do not support me on Patreon or PayPal because then I will just make more of these stupid boards. Do check the links in the description for these programming tools and various other things like the open inverter forum. But apart from that, don't do any of this stuff. It's dangerous. It's bad. In which case, we will see you in the next video. Until then, happy device programming.